Hi booktube! It's Missy. I am almost done with this bookshelf. Uh, yeah, and then I will again start up taping more tomorrow. I don't think I will get to horror today or paranormal because I'm wiped out. Um, so the very last shelf on this bookcase is my contemporary and miscellaneous so let's get started to part five of my bookshelf tour 2015. Okay people now I'm really close there's let me just show you that's well besides the ugly plugs here's my bed here is the bookshelf uh, I would say what is that maybe a foot two feet maybe two feet so I don't have very much room to move around so I'm gonna be really close this time um, sorry about all the cords I just I don't have a decent enough area for this kind of stuff so we got here we got a uh, graphic novels that I haven't read some of the what are they the great illustrated classics that are for my children once I'm done reading these then I just transfer them over to my uh, my children's room so these won't be here for very long and then of course I have all of my uh, series of unfortunate events box set my son made sure I didn't throw away the box that I told him I wouldn't because these are technically for him but they're in my room because yeah they're mine as well all right and then we have uh, my erotica <laughs> the only ones I own um, some contemporary dark contemporary and then my Harry Potter trunk so let's start with behind what all, what's all of this stuff behind this 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 massive amount of books uh, give me a second to pull them all off I will be right back Okay, so this is my first layer of stuff. Uh, back here is just, you know, books you probably don't care about. So we have ooh, Walden, the Resistance, and Civil Government by Henry D. Thoreau. Uh, we had to read that in college. My husband actually liked that. I didn't. Uh, I have the complete works of William Shakespeare. I have C.S. Lewis's uh, Narnia. I'm missing some books. I don't have one and two. I have three, which is The Voyager of the Dawn Treader. Four, which is The Silver Chair. Five, which is The Horse and His Boy. Six, which is The Magician's Nephew. And seven, which is The Last Battle. These are all disgusting and stained. And I got them for free in a storage unit that was being auctioned off at my grandparents' uh, storage unit. And, um... Yeah, I, I need to buy one and two at some point in time. All right, we also have the oh, the Scary Story box set. I showed you guys the wrap bind up one up above on my second shelf because I've already read it. I have What to Expect When You're Expecting, the uh, Bible of Pregnancy, and what else we got? We got Small Animals of the Yellowstone Ecosystem when me and my husband went to Yellowstone. We were there for two weeks, and it was so much fun. And a ton of, well, not a ton, four. We have four, right? Cliff Notes of Julius Caesar, The Tess of Der, Der Breville, eh, Breville, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I can't even pronounce it. My husband, God. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, that's a baby book. He should have been able to read that. And Walden, that makes sense. But come on now, Adventures of Tom Sawyer, I shake my head at my husband. All right, let's, <laughs> let's put all this back. All right, what do we have back here? We have my old copy of Edgar Allan Poe's Complete Works. Uh, this is a, God, a very old, is it Christopher Merlot? Oh no, The Viking Book of Poetry. Don't ask me. I don't know. I. When I was in high school, I really liked poetry, and so when my grandparents were having those auction sales, I would dig through the units and take books that nobody would have bought. This is Marlowe and Shakespeare, another collected poetry. 
book. And then I have, ooh, what's, what is this? How to Write Short by Roy Peter Clark. Uh, this was a Goodreads uh, win. This is a nonfiction on exactly what it says, how to write. Okay, my, uh, my phone, I didn't realize that it uh, gets full really fast when you make videos. I guess I haven't made this many videos in a row before because it keeps saying your storage is full, which stinks. So um, this is my, oops, my uh, Lord of the Rings trilogy. Why isn't it focusing? Um, by J.R.R. Tolkien. We have the Fellowship of the Ring. It's, oh, there we are. Um, it's out of order, but Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. This is my extremely old, disgusting box set. Um, I quite like it, though. And we have two Bibles, because you, can you can't have more than one. I don't know. Um, and then lastly, over here, we have Chicken Soup for the Sister's Soul, which I only got halfway through because it makes me cry. And then I can't. You know, I just can't. My sister gave it to me, and anything my sister gives me, I start bawling, so, blah. Oh, look! Bookmarks. That fell out of my book. I need more bookmarks. Excellent. Okay, so let's just put those back, shall we? We also have the, uh, well, I guess I can't put that back. We also have the Hogwarts Library, which consists of... The Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Quidditch Through the Ages, and The Tales of Beetle the Bard, which my husband bought for my birthday last year. And then I have Twilight Forever, which is the, god, the box set of the Blu-rays, because I, I'm addicted. Like, it's ridiculous how addicted I am to Twilight, or I was. I still really like Twilight, don't get me wrong, but um, I'm just into other stuff now. But I had to have it stupid Jacob. I hate Jacob. And I also have the Blu-ray edition of Breaking Dawn Part 2, the collector's edition of like the wedding edition of Part 1. These ones I actually want to, I want to get rid of these because I already have the Blu-ray. I don't need these ones, but I don't know what to do with them. So if you guys, if you guys want movies, let me know. Um, what else do I have here? I got Eclipse, which is, again, I had to buy all the sp special edition ones. And then I have New Moon and Twilight, obviously. I also have Queen of the Damned. I actually like this movie. It's kind of lame, but I still like it. I have Beautiful Creatures, which was terrible as a movie. Um, actually, speaking of the movie, I don't think I've watched it since reading Beautiful Creatures, so I might actually enjoy the movie now that I've read the book. I also have Interview with the Vampire. Uh, can you see I have a theme going on? I do like my paranormals and my movie uh, adaptations. I have The Mortal Instruments, City of Bones. Um, this one was bad. It was just bad, and the father was awful. I also have The Host. And what did I do with the other ones? Oh, and then bottom down here I have, oops, The Vampire Academy, which I love this movie. It's super cheesy, but I love it. And Dimitri is so hot. And I also have The Fault in Our Stars, which maybe I can stick these here. There we go. And then put that over. All right, now as I also have Harry Potter page to screen. I bought this for myself about two years ago when it was on sale on um, Amazon. I will not take that out. It's massive. And then you guys know what Harry Potter looks like. I am currently reading uh, The Order of the Phoenix to my children. The last time I did a uh, bookshelf tour, I was reading The Goblet of Fire, I think. I It takes me so long to read these books to my children. Because I only read about 15 to 20 minutes a night. Then I also have Fifty Shades Freed, which is the third and final book in the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy by E.L. James. This is not mine. I need to give it back to my friend because it's actually her sister-in-law's, which is just too many explanations. But I, I hate the series, but I hate not finishing a series as well. And so I really want to just finish it, but... 
I've had this sitting on my shelf for two years now almost, and it's ridiculous. I also have up here, um, come on now, uh, the American version of the girl with the dragon tattoo. I haven't even opened it yet. I got it for my birthday, but I kind of want to read the books first before I watch the movie again. I have seen the Swedish version, which I really enjoyed. Uh, I do like reading, um, you know, the words on the screen. I, I don't mind, I don't mind reading movies. And so, yeah, I can't, I don't know why I have such a hard time speaking when I'm on video. Anyways, this is the American version. And then I got the two free DVDs from Horror Block that I haven't opened. And then this is just an empty priority mail box for when I have to send one of you lovely people a uh, a book so I have it just in case um yeah so that was everything on the bottom and let me reorganize everything and I will put I will start on my contemporary okay so what was back there was corpse nature forensic and the struggle to pinpoint time of death by Jessica Snyder Sachs this is a non-fiction mystery. I don't know how it can be a mystery non-fiction, but that's what the Goodreads says. I also have Killers, the Most Barbaric Murders of Our Times by Nigel Cawthorn. Thank you, Penelope. This is also a non-fiction about serial killers. Then I have, this is starting my um, contemporary. This is The House of Tomorrow by Peter Boganini, uh, I think this is like a music contemporary um, coming of age book, not quite sure. And then I have Elsewhere by Gabrielle Zevin. I don't think this is a, I don't know what kind of contemporary it is, but uh, I bought it. All right, next I have, oh, I can't reach, hold on. Okay, so next I have my unread graphic novels. We have Bloody Chester by J.T. Petty and Hilary uh, Florido. This is a horror western something or other. Then I have Sin City by Frank Miller. This is, uh, is this the first one? I don't know if this is a complete, oh no. Yeah, this is the first volume. There's Marv. Um, yeah, I love the movie, so I want to read the graphic novel, which needs to happen sometime soon. I also have The Regrettable Superheroes, or The League of the Regrettable Superheroes by John Morris. This was in my Loot Crate box, and uh, this is a nonfiction of just, you know, crappy uh, superheroes. All right. Next, I have uh, Neil Gaiman's The Sandman, The Doll's House. This is volume two, which I can't wait to get to. Then I have Hellblazer by John Constantine, or John Constantine's Hellblazer, I think. Is that how it goes? Yeah. This is volume one by all of these people. And I really love the movie John Constantine, probably because I have a bias and I love, um, you know, Keanu Reeves. So, yeah, there's that. And then I have The V Wars, which I won on Goodreads and I haven't read them yet. But they're by Jonathan Mayberry and a couple other people. So I have Volume Zero. Uh, these aren't volumes. This is, what are they called when there are singles like this, editions? This is one. We have two. All right, I have uh, edition, is that, uh, whatever, five. <laughs> Here is, hey, why is that three? This is three. This is two. Oh, crap. Well, you get the picture. Those were kind of out of order, but I have zero through six. And I thought it was going to be in a volume, but it came in these single copies, and so... But yeah, it's supposed to be an adult, uh, like, vampire paranormal series, 
which I can't wait to get to. All right, and then lastly, I have um, Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem, I think that's how I say it, by Autumn Cornwell. This is supposed to go up here with my uh, adventure books because I only have four, but I ran out of room. So it's just sitting there on top of the uh, graphic novels. Okay, seriously, on to the contemporary. So the first thing I have here is there's a slight chance I might be going to hell. A novel of sewer pipes, pageant queens, and big trouble by Lori Nataro. This is a... Uh, adult, like, chiclet humor book. Yeah. Alright, it's probably going to fall. Next we have uh, Confessions of a Shopaholic by Sophie Kinsella. Um, I've read one book by her and really enjoyed it. I think it's called The Undomestic Goddess, but I read it when I was in my 20s, and I didn't even know that Sophie Kinsella wrote that book. I just remember borrowing it from the library and reading it. And so since I like that book, maybe I'll like this one too. I don't know. I don't know. I need to read it. But these are like my happy contemporaries. Uh, next I have The Sweep of the Second Hand by Dean Monty. I don't know what this is about, but this is also a contemporary book. Sometimes I just buy things that look pretty. And then I have The Weird Sisters by Eleanor Brown. I'm assuming it's about sisters, contemporary. <laughs> I'm a loser. Okay, so next we are on to the, uh, I want to say dark contemporary. This is called So Shelly by Ty Roth. I don't know why this is dark. Maybe she, I don't, I don't want to say she drowns or something, but there's that. All right, trying to keep everything from falling. Then we have uh, 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. This is a dark contemporary about suicide. And we have Memoirs of a Teenage Amnesiac by Gabrielle Zevin. Um, a lot of people say this is good. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I bought it on a whim. And yeah, another dark contemporary. Then we have uh, Living Dead Girl by Elizabeth Scott. Penelope said this was crap, and so I don't know if I want to read it. I'm still gonna, but ugh. And then I bought it as an advanced reader's copy for a dollar. I don't know how they can sell it when you're not supposed to sell ARCs, but whatever. And then I have The Sledding Hill by Chris Kutcher. This is also a dark contemporary. And then we're back to the light contemporaries. This is Write Naked, about a guy who can only write when he's naked, I guess. Um, this is by Peter Goyd. Or Gold? I don't know. Uh, then we have Looking for Alaska by John Green. I bought his box set, so I have them all. Then we have uh, Abundance of Catherines. And we have... Paper Towns. Okay, next we have Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I also have Eleanor and Park. Uh, I should be getting it sometime uh, this week since I go back to work and my coworker who borrowed it will probably give it back. Oh, next we have uh, Landline by Rainbow Rowell. This is an adult contemporary. No. Maybe it was sitting up there like that. I don't remember how it goes. I also have The Devil Wears Prada by Lauren Weisenberger. Uh, I loved the movie, so I'm hoping I like the book. Although, who knows? And I also have The Undertaking of Lily Chen by Danika Novgorodov. I'm probably way butchering that. Uh, this is a graphic novel. And it's about uh, a woman who has to marry a dead guy, I think, because that's the Asian culture. I don't know if it's Japanese or Chinese. But, um, yeah, so there is that. Next we have Choke by Chuck Palalala. Uh, 
all of his books, I believe, are supposed to be somewhat funny so or sarcastic in nature. I don't know. Anyways, that's also contemporary. Then I have Big Fish by Daniel Wallace. This is like magical realism uh, contemporary. And then I have Holding On to Zoe by George Ella Lyon or Leon. I don't know how to say that, but this is a like mental illness contemporary. And then I have The Grave Digger by Peter Grandbois, or I guess that's how you say his last name. Bois? I don't know. Uh, this is another magical realism. This is set in South America? Oh no, Spain. That's set in Spain. Then I have The Diving Pool by Yoko Ogawa. This is a collection of three short stories. Again, uh, Japanese contemporary. And then I have her other book, which is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. This is another Japanese contemporary. And I have The Observatory Mansions by Edward Carey. I thought this was a middle grade because of the chalk drawings but it's actually an adult and it's like a dark contemporary then I have Venomous by Christopher Crovatin Crovatin? another dark contemporary I guess I should probably uh, I don't know how that went up there I'll have to readjust it and then we have The Shock of the Fall by Na Nathan Filer. Um, this is a mental illness contemporary. And last but not least on this shelf, did I already show you guys uh, my erotica, which is Anne Rice's The Claiming of Sleeping Beauty. I think this, I know it's a Sleeping Beauty kind of retelling, but um, it's got a little bit of LGBT. And again, uh, oh, this is Beauty's release. Um, oh, did I? I didn't even mention that's Beauty's Punishment. So I got this from a friend. She says it's really good. And she sent it to me because I read, uh, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey. And she said that's crap. If you really want to read a good erotic romance, read Anne Rice's one. And so I was like, okay, you can send it to me. Um, so we'll see. I don't even know when I'll pick these up. They'll just be sitting on my shelf forever probably. Um, yeah. And that is it. That was the last shelf on my bookcase. Oh, it keeps going and going and going. So, yes. Thanks for watching. I will be doing paranormal and horror tomorrow. There's no way I can film it today. I am spent. Hope you guys have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye!